I think if you look back at the last 10 years, a lot of what's happened in the digital space is that we've worked really hard to clearly articulate value of why we should spend money in the digital space. Our clients have, you know, the digital clients have gotten in and, and clearly tried to understand what partners are valuable to them. But in the process, it seems like everything needs a thumbprint, either from the agency side or from the client manager, the brand manager. And the, what the thumbprint does is basically it, it precludes us from making substitutability an agenda on the item. So someone, you know, for better or for worse, whether it's uh, we've used them before and we believe they should be on the plan, all the way through to somebody got taken out to lunch. Hate to say it's still a, a piece of the business, but you know, all of those things influence the decisions that we make. And for us, in order to be able to get back to leveraging technology, figuring out how do we find the best audience at the right return on investment, um, substitutability of media should be a, a part of every conversation. It may not always be the answer, but uh, my, my thought and recommendation to all of our teams is, if you haven't figured out where you can buy that audience and if you can clearly articulate it's the right price and, and uh, you know, unless there's a, a premium experience that you need specifically for a brand, uh, we should really be coming back to all of our clients and, and you know, pushing on vendors to give us uh, options where we can find value more easily. Yeah, okay, and Phil, let me, let me ask you, can you substitute long tail finance content for a buy from Forbes.com? Can you do that with your DSP? Uh, I'm going to give you a very short answer of no. Right? So uh, is there, are there degrees of substitutability? Absolutely. Uh, does content have value? Absolutely. Does site brand have value? Absolutely. Now with that said, um, when you have strong uh, psychographic or intent signals for an individual consumer, those do tend to be more powerful predictors of performance and engagement than uh, the content indicators are, but the fact of the matter is that these work together. It's very hard to give you rules of thumb for very specific numbers or how you should think about this because it's really subjective on a per campaign basis and what are the, what are the goals for that campaign's audience and also from an engagement perspective. Yeah, got it, okay. Uh, two weeks ago, I think you all, all, got, you all have this on your uh, tables. Ad Age uh, put out their ad network and exchange guide and right here on the cover it says wither context. So um, Steve Cadelman, does content and context still matter in the DSP world? Absolutely. So <clears throat> Omnicom mostly has iconic brands, and they're going to be very concerned about making sure they're on well-lit premium brands. We do have clients that content is less valuable. Um, I think what's going to be really interesting over the, the, the next short term, essentially, is we will be able to tell what happens, right? We'll be able to say, and once again, what, what people fail to realize is Without, uh, without that, that short tail in the premium brands and the premium content, are, are, we wouldn't have any recall in the mid and long tail. It's, it's, it's kind of doing both. So mm -hmm. um, we're very interested in doing still custom sponsorships, exclusivities and the like, but um, doing uh, mid and long tail with, with essentially some of the same publishers, just letting us take control over that. So I would say in the long run, absolutely. Context matters a great deal in content. Now explain to because when we talked when we when we were playing this, Steve, you, you talked a lot about how um, you know you might buy premium uh, positions, sponsor positions, and say like a portal, and historically they were bundling in kind of a run of site or something like that. Correct. And, and now you're trying to get that delivered through. through I would say uh, yeah. Let's just platform, let's correct? call one out. Like if, yeah. if if we buy a premium sponsorship or a homepage on a Yahoo, they may bundle in two million impressions on the Yahoo network. Right. Of course, we're saying, yes, let us take control over those two million impressions. We will, we will add a, a DSP element to it. Right. So oh, bettering the whole piece. Yep, yep. Okay. Sloan, same situation for you right now? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, you, you mentioned previously that, that context still is important. I think when you look at the premium environments, absolutely there's a reason brands pick and choose and want to be there. I think um, often, even in the digital space, a, it's hard to articulate, and B, it sometimes gets lost in the shuffle, is the impact of other media. So if you don't have that premium experience, will you get lost in the, in the middle tier of inventory? It depends on how the rest of your communication strategy and plans are, are moving. If you have a great social strategy, do you need the premium experience? I, I'd venture maybe not. If you have a great TV plan and a lot of air coverage, um, you know, I, think, I think context has to be looked at within the overall structure of your communications plan, and you can make decisions where it's not, you know, they're not coupled. Jay, if I may, yeah. I, the one thing we're seeing is, as you look at each advertiser, each campaign, you can start to attribute how much does context matter. Mm -hmm. Within, you know, by creating a data model for a buyer, you can find that, for instance, you know, um, we, we have a packaged goods company, 
Um, you take the same audience, uh, you run it against a well-known content brand, and then run it on long tail, and you'll have 30% more conversions from the well-known content brand. Now, if you ran that same sort of A versus B test with a different advertiser, you'd see no difference. And, and so I, I think what's changing is the ability to actually apportion, you know, what, what percentage of the work, whether it's awareness or, or actually, you know, lower funnel sales, is the context doing versus, say, the audience target versus, say, the creative. And I, I think that's one of the big changes here. That is now knowable. And I think you know, over the next couple of years, we'll really start to work on that, um, refining that for the upper funnel things, you know, for the awareness. Right. Um, but, but I think that's a different viewpoint. In the old days, it's like, look, there's too many variables. This is unknowable. Um, so we can't isolate out on a brand or campaign basis what the relative contribution of each sort of data domain is. Yeah, got it. And if I can just add a little yeah. bit onto that, I think it's important for not just the buyers to know that, but obviously also the sellers to understand their content, because there can be a number of factors that are actually influencing those performance patterns. Is it the brand? Is it share of voice on the page? Is it the amount of time that the consumer spends on that particular page or section of the site, and so the exposure that they're getting? And so it really behooves the sellers in the room to make sure that they understand what are the patterns that the buyers see in their sites. And I think one of the things that maybe publishers get a little tied up in knot about sometimes is that they think that the buyers are always going to just push the price down. What the buyers are doing, from my perspective, and feel free to jump in, is they're simply looking for rational pricing. And if there is value that is being derived from that brand or from the design of the ad units and, and their interaction on the page, they will pay for that. And sometimes I think the publishers don't quite realize that the buyers want you to be successful. They want you to have higher rates, but the value has to be there. 